one of the is there. What is this NOI? I can't understand. Somebody help me. Have you ever wondered how to do the NOI? Here's your chance. Let us understand the roots that it comes from, which is the capital structure. And that means that we have to understand the basics of it. To put it in simple words, the capital structure of any firm can be defined as a mix of the owned capital, which includes the equity, reserves and surplus, and the borrowed capital, which includes debentures, loans and other borrowings from financial institutions. The objectives of the capital structure of any firm is that it tries to establish a balance between the shareholders' expectations, which involves risks and returns, and the capital requirements of the firm. Terms like return, risk, cost, control, flexibility and capacity are very very important elements of capital structure and a firm always measures out these elements before establishing the right one for their firm. Now let us move on to the four theories that are there under the capital structure. These are the traditional approach, the net income approach, the Modiglani Miller model and the net operating income method. So without any further ado, let's jump into that. It can be simply defined as the approach where the value of a firm is not dependent upon its capital structure. This approach to capital structure believes the debt to equity ratio does not affect the overall cost. There is no optimum ratio of debt to equity. It is always believed that any ratio taken is the optimum ratio. This approach believes that the market capitalizes value of the firm as a whole, which means that the split between the debt to equity ratio is irrelevant. The next assumption is that the use of debt structure having low cost increases the equity capital structure. The last assumption to be made is that there are no corporate taxes that are assumed in this method. Here we can see that the x-axis has the degree of leverage and the y-axis has the cost of capital. Now the split up is basically that the KE represents the cost of equity the KO represents cost of overall capital and KD represents the cost of debt. So in that case, we can first see the white point that is given over here. Now in this case, we can clearly see that the amount of debt in a 20 is to 80 ratio, for example, should be at 10% and the cost of equity, let's say, starts at 15%. So in case the debt is at 10%, the cost of equity would automatically rise to 16%. The use of debt to equity is known as financial leverage. And the reason why the cost of equity capital goes up from 15% to 16 is because of the firm's increase in financial risk. But in another case, let's say the percentage of debt goes to 50%. And let's assume it to be somewhere here. Now in this case, we can see that the cost of debt would remain the same and the cost of equity on the other hand would go up from the 16% to 18%. Now in both the cases we can clearly see that the cost of overall capital in case 1 and case 2 are the same. Although the equity capital has gone up in its percentage and the debt capital has remained the same at 10%. This is how the NOI approach is different from the others. It maintains the fact that the cost of overall capital will remain the same irrespective of the degree of change of debt when compared to equity. <laughs>